Hey everybody, JB here. Welcome to another special edition of the Trap Rock 101 podcast. Uh, Today I have a a short conversation to share with you. Uh, The conversation is with my friend Brendan Mayer, who uh, we already interviewed uh, early on. I think he was episode number three of the podcast. Um, But recently, uh, Brendan was just part of a new project from Mailboat Records called Floating Collective. So uh, I wanted to... uh, get him on the phone and talk about that a little bit because it's, uh, it's pretty different than anything he's ever done before. Um, very unique and very cool. So just kind of wanted to dig into that a little bit. To the best of my knowledge, this is going to be the first uh, first real interview, first real piece of coverage that Floating Collective has had outside of just the basic press release that came out in October. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I hope you all are, uh, are having a good December. 2020 is almost over. We've almost made it to 2021 uh you know january and february are looking like they're going to be pretty rough uh but i think that there's light at the end of the tunnel if we all just hang on and do our best to take care of each other better days are coming and uh i think i think floating collective might be part of those better days enjoy have a merry christmas a great holiday season and uh, i will talk to you in 2021 all right folks i am uh i'm on the zoom call with uh brenda mayor a uh, longtime friend of Pirates and Poets, and uh, want to take a few minutes to catch up with him and his new uh, new project that he is uh, collaborating on. Uh, the project is called Floating Collective, and Brendan, tell us about it. How did, how did it come about? What's up, JB, man? Good to be with you again. Floating Collective, this is kind of one of those projects that could only come out of a year like 2020. Uh, me and my good friends, Mick Utley and Aaron McAnally, his wife, uh, respective son and daughter of Mike Utley and Mac McNally. We, uh, I, I'm not exact. Mick kind of was the one to first put the idea together, but my understanding of how it happened was that Jimmy had mentioned to maybe Mike or Mac, like, Hey, it would be pretty cool. You know, we got all these musicians in the coral reefer family in the next generation. Would they be interested in, in putting together a record? of some kind, like, I don't know what you'd call it, but it kind of like, you know, this idea based on second generation reefers making music together. And Mick Utley is a fantastic piano player and singer and songwriter and producer. So he was kind of tasked with helming this thing. So the year went on and all the craziness happened with the pandemic and what started out as a full record kind of got scaled back and we thought that it was the whole project was probably going to get scrapped and um nick aaron and i were kind of the core you know musicians behind this whole thing so we got together and said hey you know what let's just get together and write a couple songs and we'll send them around to to jimmy and other folks in that world and if they like them we'll do something small at least so we got together and, and wrote a couple things and it kind of just snowballed from there as, as they tend to do. Um, we all kind of, it feels like a truly collaborative thing where we all kind of put ourselves into it. It feels like a really good mixture of our three different personalities and send it off to Jimmy and he, thankfully he liked it and they gave us the green light to go ahead and put it out. And now I guess I'm in a new band. <laughs> so. <laughs> So the song is called On the Run. Uh, Was that a co-write between all three of you or? Yeah, yeah. Three ways. I mean, it was crazy like how even that was because most co-writes, there's usually one person who kind of like either brought the idea in or clearly they kind of like take over a little bit. And, it, you know, it's a co-write, but it's clearly their song that they helmed from the beginning. But with this, it was crazy. Like I had the initial chord progression. Aaron had the lyric idea Mick kind of contributed equally on both sides and it managed to fall into place. Well, cool. I, uh, the first time I heard it, of course you're, you're the vocal on it or the, the lead vocal. Yeah. First, yeah. my first thought was this is the happiest bounciest Brenda Mayer song I've ever heard. <laughs> All it took was forcing me to play with other people, I guess, to get <laughs> some joy out of me. Oh, <laughs> that, that was literally I the guess first it thing does that be good. in my head. Well, man, I'm glad to hear it because I've been telling myself, you know, one of these days I should probably need to write something that 
people can actually feel good listening to or dance along a little bit. So I'm glad <laughs> we finally came up with something. Yeah. And it was a, a pretty, I mean, it's a, it's a great song, great track, great production, but it's pretty basic in production as yeah. well. There's not mm-hmm. a lot of crazy stuff going on in the background. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my usual MO is to kind of throw as much as I can at the wall and see what sticks. And this was, intentionally not that and i really got to give credit to mick and aaron for uh kind of insisting that it be a certain way you know we went into this project saying to ourselves that we really want to have a focused idea of what this band is you know we didn't we wanted it to be clear like hey this is the sound we do and if you listen to a floating collective song you have a general idea of what you're going to get so we were really inspired by the a lot of California, Laurel Canyon, folk rock from back in the day. Um, you've got Mick and Aaron singing three-part harmony with me on it. And, uh, you know, we w- wanted to do something kind of in the vein of the Eagles, Jackson Brown, uh, Joni Mitchell, um, and then kind of mix it with some more modern Nashville Americana as well. Well, I think you got it. Uh, who else is on the track? Thank you. Well, it's just the three of us. And then uh, the only guest we got on it is Mr. Eric Darkin of the Coral Reefer Band. He was the only guy uh, we knew who could give us what we wanted in terms of a rootsy uh, kind of stripped down kit percussion sound. And he's on actual, is he on a drum kit or is it more more of a, what we think of him? You <laughs> I actually couldn't tell you because uh, Eric is one of those guys, you send him a track and he goes into his secret laboratory and he sends you something back and you don't always know how he got the sounds, but they're generally almost always amazing. (laughs) I mean, I would have get, I would guess that it's a traditional drum kit, but now that you said it's him, he plays very similar to Melanie, I guess, in some ways he does. does, the the Cajon. Yeah. Yeah, So uh, who knows? That's interesting. I'm guessing it's probably some sort of hybrid kit where he's got, a real snare in there, but maybe a kick that he played overdubbed along with the cajon and he's got some shakers and stuff. So he, he's a maestro when it comes to that stuff. Oh, well, cool. It's like I said, it's a great track. And, uh, thank you. Uh, so what is the plan for floating collective going ahead? Is there a plan? Well, we're, we're kind of writing it as we go, you know, and obviously given the uncertainty of the music industry right now, we don't fully know, uh, but the idea is that part of that name, Floating Collective, was we, we wanted it to, to be a somewhat open-ended concept where other coral reefer kids could jump in if they want, you know, like, heck, if, if Delaney feels like she wants to sing something, she can jump in and do that. If, if Mick's brother Slade wants to rip a guitar solo on a song in the future, he's, he's welcome to do that. My sister, if she wants to sing something, we kind of you know, clearly we're the core members right now who are kind of driving this boat, but we wanted it to be a collective. The name's fitting, I think, you know? Yeah. And and, it's a- and so moving forward, I guess we're, we're going to keep writing and try to come up with a good five to 10 songs by, you know, early next year. And then if the interest is there, we'd love to do an album together. I got a couple messages asking if we were going to tour and play some parrot head events. That's, that's so my I, next I question is, 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 is there going to be a as well? Yeah. Gigs. <laughs> Man, I, I certainly hope so. You know, like you're not, you don't have to twist my arm to get me excited about playing a gig right now. Certainly. But with those guys, especially, I think we'd have a blast there. Um, it's fun. You know, it's, it's just fun playing with different people and doing something different. That's not necessarily out of my comfort zone, but it's just a new context for what I do. And I am super excited about that. So we've been lucky that Radio Margaritaville's thrown a lot of support behind the track and the, and the idea. And um, so we feel like if people want to hear more, we want to do more. Cool. And has the reaction been pretty, pretty good so far? It's been really positive. Yeah. The, the initial post on, on it that I did was one of them, I think my most interacted with social media posts I've ever done. So clearly And, you know, and it's funny, John, like throughout the years, I've gotten a lot of questions when I was on the road, either with my dad or with Jimmy or just doing my solo thing. Hey, are you ever going to do something? I know that some of these other Coral Reefer kids play music. Why aren't you guys doing something? So I I think there was always this little germ of an idea in the back of our heads 
that there could potentially be an interest in us doing something like that. So I, I again, I got to owe a lot of credit to Mick and Aaron for, for having this idea initially and, and making it happen. But I'm thrilled to be part of it. Well, cool. It's a, it's a great song. And uh, hopefully you guys will get a chance to at least do a few shows live. Uh, so absolutely. Man. So Mick plays P, uh, piano keyboard. That should be no surprise to anybody. Yes. Uh, yeah. And Aaron, Matt, Aaron is Max eldest daughter, one of three. And she is just a, a really cool person. And, you know, she does a lot of work in Nashville. That's really cool advocating for artists right now during the pandemic. She's working closely with a lot of the political machinery in Nashville, fighting for musicians rights and, and, and all that. So really appreciate her. And also she's got a great lyrical sense and beautiful voice as you can hear on the song. Does she play anything? She's got she does her play back guitar. Back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She plays guitar as well. So I know if we do some shows, we're going to have to figure out how to, to make that work. Either hire a rhythm section or maybe we'll just strip down tree or something, but I don't know yet. Cool. And uh, where, where does this lead Brenda Mayer solo? Cause I know last time we talked, you had some songs in the can and talking about a record and everything. So, yeah. Well, I actually got some, uh, some stuff that's like, probably within a week and a half of coming out. So I did my first big uh, music video for the title track off this new project that I'm coming out with. And uh, it's, I decided to split the full record up into three parts. It's called best at the show set one, set two and set three. So set one's just about done and should have that by hopefully January one Cool and enough. music video along with it. So I'm excited. That video was done by a mutual friend. Am I correct? You had some help. Yes, that is absolutely correct. This is Lauren Musgrove. She's fantastic. Um, went down to, to Alabama to film with her. And she is just one of those super artistic people. She had a vision and it was awesome working with her. So yeah, it, man, I yeah. forgot about that until just now without you, this video would not have happened. So. I don't know about that, but you'd have, you'd have done the video. No, a hundred percent. Yeah. I would, we would have never linked up. So but, that's, yeah. that's a funny story. Lauren is a uh, very talented. Uh, for those of you who don't know who, what we're talking about, uh, our good friends, Bob and Debbie Musgrove, their mm -hmm. youngest daughter, yeah. uh, has won several Emmy awards for yeah. some stuff. Yeah. So she's really talented and very good at what she does. So we're looking forward so to I that, was lucky, man. man. It's, it speaks to the, the power of this whole uh, crazy community. You, you, you'd be amazed all the talent that, that resides in the parrot head world and the trap rock world. And so yeah. this is some and, amazing collaborations can come of it. And not just musically here. We've, we've got other people. And not just musically. Can, yeah, I know. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Well, hey, man, thanks for talking. Anything else you want to add to everybody? This is going to come out before the end of the year. So, yeah, um, just keep an eye out for new Brandon Mayer stuff. That video, we're, Lauren and I are really proud of it. Um, and Floating Collective. And this may come out uh, after the fact. But if you get a chance, check out the Stars and Promises Christmas show if you're if you're so inclined. I think there's going to be some additional streams or down video download for it. So cool that my dad put on. Brendan, thank you much, man. And uh, let's uh, let's have a much uh, better year in 2021. Man, I can't wait to hang with you and and get back to normal. Yeah, the the last time we uh, got to hang out was like pretty much the end of normal life. So they're at the end of yeah, February. <laughs> that was right at the end of it. <laughs> I know, I know. It's crazy, man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time and it's it's always great to see you. Hey y'all, this is Kitty Stedman from Drop Dead Dangerous. I want to thank you for listening to Trop Rock 101 podcast with Pirates and Poets. Pirates and Poets is a crucial platform for independent artists and writers, and they have been working tirelessly to make sure that we make it through this difficult time. Please show them your support as well by visiting piratesandpoets.net slash store or piratesandpoets.net slash donate. Cheers, y'all.